The history of slavery is a complex and difficult topic, spanning thousands of years and many different cultures and societies. Slavery has taken many different forms throughout history, including debt slavery, chattel slavery, serfdom, and indentured servitude. It has left an indelible mark on our collective consciousness, shaping the way we view ourselves and our world. From ancient civilizations to modern times, the practice of enslaving others has persisted, often fueled by greed, power, and a misguided sense of superiority. The history of slavery is a complex and multifaceted story, spanning thousands of years and encompassing a wide variety of cultures and societies. Good day! Welcome back to History in Minutes. Today, we'll be answering a very intriguing question. Were the Irish the first slaves in America? The start of the Irish's journey to the Americas started at the end of the Battle of Kinsale in 1601. The English took approximately 30,000 military prisoners and began a policy of banishment or transportation. This policy was later expanded by James I, who encouraged the sale of Irish prisoners as slaves to planters and settlers in the New World colonies. The first recorded sale of Irish slaves occurred in 1612 to a settlement on the Amazon River. In 1625, an official proclamation was issued ordering the rounding up and the selling of Irish prisoners as slaves to English planters. From 1629 to 1632, a significant number of Irish men and women were sent to Guiana, Antigua, and Montserrat. By 1637, approximately 69% of the population of Montserrat consisted of Irish slaves. Unlike the purchase of African slaves, who were typically sold for 20 to 50 pounds sterling, Irish slaves were captured and sold for 900 pounds of cotton, making them a more lucrative source of labor for English slave traders. The Irish quickly became the largest source of slaves for English slave traders, with many being forcibly taken from their homes and their families to work in harsh conditions on plantations in the New World. The practice of enslaving Irish people was brutal and exploitive, and their status as property denied them even basic human rights. Beginning in 1649, Oliver Cromwell launched a campaign of terror in Ireland, which resulted in the transportation and the sale of all captured soldiers as slaves. A few months later, in 1650, 25,000 Irish were sold to planters in St. Kitts. During the 1650s, over 100,000 Irish children between the ages of 10 and 14 were taken from their families and sold as slaves in the West Indies, Virginia, and New England. Shockingly, more Irish were sold as slaves to the American colonies from 1651 to 1660 than the total free population of the Americas at that time. Cromwell's policy of enslaving the Irish continued, with the infamous To Hell or To Connacht proclamation in 1654 confiscating all Irish-held lands and relocating native Irish west of the Shannon or transporting them to the West Indies. Those who failed to comply were banished to America or other overseas locations, and those who returned were punished with death. Although soldiers were encouraged to kill the Irish people, the slave trade proved to be too profitable to ignore. As a result, 52,000 Irish were sold to Barbados and Virginia, and an additional 30,000 were taken prisoner and sold as slaves. In 1656, Cromwell's Council of State ordered the rounding up of 1,000 Irish girls and 1,000 Irish boys to be taken to Jamaica and sold as slaves to the English planters. The extent of the Irish slave trade was likely even greater, as little record was kept of this activity. The forced enslavement of the Irish people is a tragic and often overlooked part of history, which had a profound impact on the Irish and the American people. It is important to acknowledge and understand this history to work towards a more just and equitable future. It may come as a surprise to many that between 1600 and 1699, more Irish people were sold into slavery than Africans. In this period, many Irish men, women, and children were subjected to forced labor and exploitation, which had a significant impact on the Irish community and the history of slavery in America. While some Irish people entered into servant indentures, which were mutual agreements between a servant and their employer, many others were sold into slavery against their will. The indentured servants would sell a period of time in exchange for passage, and in return they would receive housing, food, clothing, and sometimes a piece of land. However, slaves had no such rights or protections and were considered property that could be bought, sold, and traded at will. Sometimes slavery was not recorded as such or not recorded at all. Starting from 1625, the Irish were systematically sold with a single purpose, as slaves. Unlike indentured servants, they were not given a choice, protection, or mutual agreement. 
They were simply captured and handed over to shippers who would sell them for profit. The profits were enormous, as Irish slaves sold for as much as 900 pounds of cotton, which was a significant sum at that time. Everyone involved in the Irish slave trade made a profit, except for the slaves themselves. Interestingly, Irish and African slaves were often housed in the same facilities and were considered the property of the plantation owners. However, African slaves were generally valued higher and thus commanded a higher price. The cost of an African slave was around 20 to 50 pounds sterling, whereas Irish slaves were sold for only 900 pounds of cotton, which is approximately equivalent to 5 pounds sterling. Despite this, African slaves were often treated slightly better than Irish slaves. Indentured servitude was a prevalent practice in British North America until the late 18th century. It served as a way for impoverished Europeans to migrate to the American colonies. These individuals would sign an indenture in exchange for passage to the colonies, after which they would work for a certain period, usually five years. The majority of indentured servants worked as farm laborers or domestic servants, while some of them apprenticed to be craftsmen. Indentured contracts were often sold by shipmasters to employers in the colonies. The terms of these contracts were not always enforced by the American courts, although runaway servants were usually captured and returned to their employers. While most contracts were in increments of five years, some provided an opportunity to extend to an additional five years, and some even included a free passage home once the contracted labor was completed. However, there were no regulations governing employers' control over the indentured servants once their contracted labor was completed, which often led to mistreatment and abuse. Our 18th century newspaper collections, such as the Pennsylvania Gazette and the South Carolina Gazette, featured many advertisements for the sale of indenture contract and the recovery of runaway servants. During the 17th century, Irish people were often treated as slaves in British colonies in America and the Caribbean, being as these slaves were not necessarily purchased outright, but rather sold into indentured servitude for a set period of time in exchange for passage to the colonies would be experiencing a different turn of the events. For like indentured servants who were usually guaranteed release from their contracts upon a certain number of years, Irish slaves had no such guarantee of freedom and were often treated brutally. There were no legal protections for Irish slaves, and it was not considered a crime to kill them. In fact, Irish Catholics were not even considered Christians under the law, so the protections that were extended to other slaves did not apply to them. The lack of legal protections made it easy for planters to abuse and exploit Irish slaves, and many were subjected to harsh punishments such as whipping and branding. One particularly cruel practice was the breeding of Irish women to produce more slaves. Children born to Irish slaves were also considered slaves, perpetuating the cycle of exploitation. In some cases, planters even bred Irish women with African men in order to produce slaves with lighter skin who could be sold for higher prices. The practice was eventually outlawed, but not out of concern for the well-being of the slaves. Rather, slave traders saw it as competition and wanted to protect their own profits. The Irish slave trade continued for over 100 years, with fresh supplies of captives being transported to the colonies following the events of the Battle of the Boyne. It was not until 1839 that the British government passed a bill forbidding the transportation of Irish people as slaves, finally bringing an end to the practice. The lives of slaves in the Americas were marked by extreme brutality, violence, and exploitation. Slaves were treated as property and denied basic human rights. They were subjected to beatings, rape, and murder, and forced to work long hours in harsh conditions. Despite this, many slaves organized and resisted their oppressors, often through acts of rebellion, sabotage, and escape. The abolition of slavery was a long and difficult process, marked by both successes and setbacks. In many cases, abolition was the result of a long and hard-fought struggle by the enslaved people themselves who organized and resisted their oppressors in a variety of ways. Abolition was also driven by social and political movements, such as the abolitionist movement in the United States, which sought an end to slavery and to promote the rights of all people. This ends today's video. Let us know in the comments what other pieces of history you want to know next. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content worth your every minute.